Hey guys, Derek here with The Closet Doctor, and I had some questions on checklists uh, for designers, installation, and stuff like that. My recommendation is uh, to read the checklist manifesto because that really explains checklists. But uh, first off, hey, if you, if you like these videos that I do, do me a favor, like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, and that way uh, you can get updates and stuff like that. Uh, let me show you what we do. So the first thing I wanna go over with it, so I'm gonna show you some checklists that we've got here and the information that we've got. The first thing I wanna tell you is that you have to set standards for things and write stuff down. And the greatest example on this one, there's a more detailed video of this uh, on my channel. You can search it on how to arrive for work. But we have set a standard of how you arrive to work and we've written it down. And so we have that, when we have discrepancies, we can go back to it. A lot of times I hear people say, Oh, the designer should know this or the installer should know that. And the truth is they don't know. And so when you put together your standards, this is how we're going to do things. It makes it easy. And so we've set up standards. And so uh, this is one for our designers. They don't, with those guys, they're not going down this on every job. But when we start missing things, we're able to go back to it. Uh, so we have that, you know, our cabinet vision has been double checked. And that when they designed it, that all the direct, uh, all the depths are the same size, that everything matches, that you know, we know what to do. This is a checklist. It's not detailed instructions, it's a checklist. There's no oddball sizes that we're in quarter inch increments. The base route is in each room. All of this kind of stuff that everything is included and you can, you can take a look at this, you can screenshot it for your own stuff. And then, so that's our, our stuff here. When we get to stuff that's not standard, that we don't do every day, uh, that we have uh, solutions to that. And this is an older one. I've got a new one for non-standard items that they have a second set of eyes look at it, either me or a lead installer, somebody else. And then they would go through all that needs to be done on the contract, uh, specialty instructions, all of that stuff there. So I expect the designers to know this and follow this. We'll bring it out sometimes and go, hey, we need to, we need to get back on track. Now, when the job is done, we print, um, these ones are in white and we have different checklists for different projects. This is in an Excel spreadsheet and it automatically prints out the customer's name. We put it on the side so when we're looking on clipboards that we can see it over here as well and with a designer and everything on it. But we've gone through and all the stuff that needs to happen. So the office, when we get a new contract in, this is the stuff that they have to do and they check off on it and they initial it. Everything on here is in a yes, no. We're looking for all yeses. And so some of these questions, when you're reading it, you might realize that that really sounds funny. And it's to, we've written it that way so that we get a yes. So when we go down it, that everything is a yes. Uh, and then when we get into production over here, he's got a whole bunch of stuff that a lot of it matches what is on the designer one over here. And so uh, you're looking at, you know, construction methods, follow our standards, project clearly understood, job was linked, job was updated, contract plans. You can see all of this stuff that we need to, and then we check, now we're into looking at the cabinet vision file. Where are we at there with my finger? Uh, th there's a baseboard route that we have, the measurements are correct, that there's no oddball sizes, stuff that was on the designer one. And we've got it, and then we have an additional checklist for the production guy that he goes through on the design to make sure that he's got everything. And so he checks that and says, yeah, I went through my checklist. Uh, closet rod cut list is printed with a hanging rail. Uh, cut list is added to that. And when we're doing, when we're doing foil or if we're, if we're their slab doors and we're running them in house, we grain match them. It's just a button we select on cabinet vision. Door list is printed out and exactly what to do on some of this stuff. And we're signing yes, and then we're putting, you know, the material, quantity, code, all of that stuff. That's our whole process before it leaves the shop. Uh, and I came up with this because I would do this and I would forget to check these things. And so that's why we've created this checklist. You can't do things over and over again. And then down the shop side, it has everything as well. You'll notice at the top of each section, it says the contract and plans are reviewed before they start anything else. And then we go down all of this. And then we have the same thing over here for installations. Once again, the installer, the first thing they're supposed to do is go over their plans and their contracts so they know what they're doing. Visual check that they've got everything. You'll notice that, you know, there's a note on there for FastCap. They're supposed to go through this, 
before they leave the shop. Uh, every now and then, you know, I'll get somebody to call me, hey man, I left my tools there, or hey, we for, we're short on fast caps. And I, hey, did you go over your checklist? And no, and so we follow up on this, and then this is what needs to be done at the house. We have our notes on here and those kind of things. So when we first started this uh, a while back, we, we kind of had a checklist and it got more detailed and more detailed and more detailed. One of the things that you have, the struggle that you'll have with employees is they don't want to use it. I'm too smart. I don't need to use that. Uh, I grew up, my dad was a pilot. I was around aviation. Uh, airplanes, everything they do in airplanes have checklists. Uh, and, you know, because they're very, they're very, as you'll talk about in the book, uh, Checklist Manifesto, that they're very complicated systems. You know, a checklist might have a hundred items on them and you can't remember all of those things. Uh, the other thing is when you use a checklist, it doesn't require your brain to think it's already there. So you don't have to go, oh, I got to remember to get my tools. I got to remember to get this. I got to remember to get that. When you review it, it's a reminder to do those things. So once again, we had issues with our employees following it, but when we would have a follow-up, so we have the yes and no on there, we would go down and we're looking for all yeses on there. And if we have no's, we'd go back and we actually have a rating system. We've kind of, with some stuff that's been going on, COVID and stuff, we haven't been going, we haven't been following it and tracking it as much, but we have a rating system of good job, done but, and incomplete. And so when we have done buts, we'd call it out. You know, what was the issue? Or if we have an incomplete, which re anything that requires a follow-up trip, the first thing we ask you is, was that checked on the checklist? And then, so for the, I'm gonna say for the first six months, it was very difficult for our people and they would they would wanna be doing things from memory. Now my lead shop guy, Daniel, he is adamant about that checklist. He makes sure that everything is checked and everything there is in the box. So when it gets loaded up, the, the installer can go out. So it's a culture shift. You're gonna have people that are gonna fight it. You're gonna have trouble with it. They're not gonna follow it, they're not gonna do their thing, but you have to review it. So when you have a mistake, when they show up and they don't have tools or they don't have hardware, they have something that's on the checklist, you review it and go over them. It's like, hey, why wasn't this on the, you know, it's on the checklist, you signed off on it. Like a lot of times we'll have that, they'll sign yes, but then they're short of hardware. I'm like, so, and then you, it's just a question that you're gonna ask them. So did you actually put your eyes on that and verify that or did you just check the, the box that it was there and, and didn't do what you were supposed to? And so it puts that back on them. Um, and that's one of the things that we've learned with this when we have the written standard, how to arrive to work, that it's a written standard and it puts it back from a management issue. Now it's on the employee. Have we not gone over this standard with you? Okay, you're choosing not to follow it and that's how we manage it. So that's how the checklists work. Highly recommend the book. Uh, checklist manifesto read that take a look at these shoot screenshots of it and make your own you can't you can't have mine because mine aren't going to work for you they have to you have to design it and the best thing to do is your installation checklist have your installer make the checklist of all of that go over it with them your shop guy hey what's all the things that you need to do what's the order that you need to do with it have them design it the guys that are doing it are the ones that need to be, they need to, it needs to be in the order that they're gonna do it. Make sure you work with them. Don't just give them a checklist to follow. So that's what's there. Uh, let's hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and remember, like and subscribe down below in the video so you can get more video updates from me.